Welcome back in. You're taking a look at Brad Crawford's updated playoff bracket and a new number one. He has Ohio State as the one seed over Georgia from last week. The Dogs are now the fifth seed, and Texas is the SEC champ at number two. And like I said last week, I had kind of a feeling there'd be a different Big 12 rep every week. Last week it was Iowa State. This week it's Kansas State. And finally, his new G5 representative is Northern Illinois. So let's bring in Brad Crawford to talk about his updated bracket. Let's start with the new number one. Mentioning Georgia, though, what do they have to do to gain back your trust as an SEC champion? Georgia has to look better on offense. Did not look very good in Lexington last week. Carson Beck, not as many playmakers around him as we thought heading into the season. And the offensive line has some issues now with Tate Ratledge out several weeks with an injury. So I did drop Georgia to the fifth seed, number two in the SEC behind Texas. Georgia still has to play Alabama on the road, Ole Miss on the road, and they go to Austin. So we're talking about the Bulldogs and Kirby Smart playing the nation's toughest road schedule the rest of the way. Number four in the SEC is number six in the AP poll, Tennessee. They're playing at number 15, Oklahoma. Now, Tennessee is in your field, as I said, as the fourth SEC representative. They're actually up two spots to number eight from last week. But you mentioned a tough schedule for Georgia. The Vols still have dates with Alabama and Georgia on the schedule. So what would a win here in Norman do for their playoff chances? Yeah, the good news for Tennessee is they catch Oklahoma at a time where the last two games for Oklahoma, the Sooners squeaked by Houston by a couple points and then had to have a touchdown late against Tulane to kind of pull that one out last week. So battle of unbeatens at, in Oklahoma this weekend. But I think Tennessee right now is one of the more SEC's underrated elite teams, one of five right now inside that top six of the AP poll from the SEC. And I certainly think Tennessee is playoff capable. Dylan Sampson right now running the football with ease. Nico, obviously, at quarterback, is playing well. And defensively, Tennessee has not been challenged yet. That changes Saturday night against Oklahoma. So many storylines going into this game, but certainly a win would go a long way in their playoff chances. Uh, meanwhile, we've got number 12, Utah, and number 17, Oklahoma State. Neither is in this bracket, but like I joked, the Big 12 is volatile as heck. So what would a win do for that race? Yeah, every week the Big 12 championship race is going to change. I mean, I don't see an unbeaten emerging from that conference based on this schedule upcoming over the next four to five weeks. Several top 20 teams are going to play each other beginning Saturday. Utah in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Cam Rising still day-to-day. -day. We don't know about his injury status. Isaac Wilson likely the starter at quarterback for the Utes. And at Oklahoma State, reigning Doak Walker award winner, running back Ollie Gordon, has yet to get started this season. I think he only has 100-yard game, not the typical performance we've seen out of him the last couple seasons, but Alan Bowman, quarterback for the Cowboys, five touchdowns last week. So I'm expecting a high-scoring game in Oklahoma State and probably a game, Emily, that comes down to the final possession or two. I also would like to see if the Big 12 can get multiple teams in this race. There's another conference, too, that only has one, and that's the ACC. We've got kind of a game of consequence between Clemson and NC State. As I said, only one ACC team, and that's Miami at this point. So why are you keeping an eye on this game between Clemson and NC State on Saturday? This is a game Clemson really needs to win because NC State's not as strong as we thought they were maybe a month ago as a preseason top 25. You know, you've got Grayson McCall starting quarterback for NC State. He's out. The Packer going to start a true freshman. And by the way, they're a 21-point underdog in Death Valley. We saw last time out, Clemson scored 66 points against App State. They recovered from that black eye they suffered in the season opener against Georgia. So big opportunity here for Clemson in its ACC opener to pass the eye test and kind of further inch their way closer to Miami, who I think right now the Canes are undoubtedly the ACC favorite. Still trying to figure out who Clemson is. As you said, we've seen two versions of the Tigers, so this one will say a lot about them. Finally, let's end with the CBS game of the week between number 11 USC and number 18 Michigan. It is USC's Big Ten debut in the big house. They are number 11 in this bracket for you, so you see them as a playoff team. But what can this game do for both of these teams' playoff pursuit? Yeah, it's hard to believe that we're only in week four, but Michigan is pretty much playing a playoff elimination game this weekend at home against Southern Cal. 
And the Wolverines very rarely are they a home underdog. So Sharon Moore has plenty of bulletin board material inside that locker room. We saw USC a couple of weeks ago, Emily, beat LSU out in Las Vegas. Miller Moss at quarterback playing at an elite level in the post Caleb Williams era. And the big news for Southern Cal is the Trojans are much improved defensively. That's been the Achilles heel of these Lincoln Riley coach teams the last few seasons, but not this season. So Saturday's game in Ann Arbor, very big Big Ten opener for both teams. I think it's just slightly bigger for Michigan, though, because the Wolverines cannot afford to have two losses heading into late September. Wow, a potential playoff eliminator game for Michigan, and we are in September. That is uh, big news there, and thank you, Brad Crawford, so much for your updated playoff bracket. He will continue to update this throughout the season, but just a reminder, one last look at this updated bracket. Ohio State is the one seed, Texas the two in the SEC champion. You've got Kansas State, the Big 12 rep, and Northern Illinois coming out of the G5. We'll see what changes Saturday brings. <laughs>